Hello and welcome to this review of my Dell 8101, specifically the original Alpsmade version. The Dell 8101 series, which spanned more than 10 years, is one of the most common vintage mechanical keyboard series, and probably the most well-known and widespread Alps-based keyboards of all time. I've done several reviews of different iterations of this keyboard, such as the M97 and the last model, the M90, which was actually my first ever keyboard review. I had no idea what I'd be getting myself into then. Dell 8101W keyboards. The later versions were all made by Silatech, who did various horrible things to it over time, but this is the original model made by Alps Electric themselves, and although visually it's very similar, there are loads of differences. This is reflected in the price as well. While the later models are pretty cheap, these Alps made ones tend to go for several hundred dollars on eBay. The 8101 was a Dell branded version of the Alps AX keyboard, a widely used keyboard platform that Alps used to make keyboards for companies such as Sharp, Bull, Mitsubishi, Toshiba and SGI. The latter specifically had models that often came with a speckled grey colour scheme, which earned it the nickname SGI Granite Keyboard. The size of the Dell contract must have been huge though, because I think that between Silatech and Alps, the total number of Dell 8101s is greater than that of all the other AX keyboards combined. The AX platform's large footprint landed it the well-known nickname Bigfoot, usually Dell Bigfoot for the Silatech models, and Alps Bigfoot for the Alpsmate ones, to differentiate them from the later production batches. I've done a whole video on the history of these keyboards, and a comparison video of a destroyed example of these with an M90, but never actually a dedicated video on these specifically, so I guess it's high time. I've had this keyboard for years. I got it at the recycling center for half a pound, which is a good deal, even though it was in rather bad condition. Keyboards that I buy myself sometimes take years to get to though, because donations take priority. Anyway, because it was pretty dirty and kind of bashed up, the switches felt scratchy. I gave them a clean, like in my Alps Switch cleaning video series, shameless plug, and this made them a bit better. They're quite okay now, although still nowhere near as good as new old stock ones of course. The switches are in fact Alps SKCM Salmon, which is a second gen type of tactile Alps switch that Silitech never used. All the versions they made used the more common black Alps instead. Salmon Alps are somewhat stiff tactile switches with roughly the same weighting as black Alps, so around 70 grams of force at the tactile bump, and if you get them in good condition, they're excellent. Giving this board a spin now that it's a little bit cleaned up was definitely not unwelcome, it's a nice one to use. The build quality of these boards is pretty damn good, and despite clearly having had some abuse, it still works great. Whatever happened to it, I'm not sure, but all the clips that hold the case together have snapped off, not a single one survived, which is one of the reasons I always oppose using plastic clips in a build. However, thankfully, it also has screws to keep it together, which is why it's not a mess of loose parts right now. Unfortunately, one of the screw sockets has also broken off, which is why I'm furthermore a big fan of using brass screw sockets. So this corner is loose, but that's about it. Like I said, considering it seems to have been shown all the corners of someone's room, it's held up quite well, a testament to its build quality. It's got a thick metal mounting plate, unpainted, typical for 8101s, and together with a fairly tough plastic case, this brings the weight to 1.76 kilograms, compared to 1.46 kilograms for the later Silitech M90 models, 300 grams heavier, a significant difference considering both keyboards have the same footprint and similar design. The case also appears to have been made out of a different type of plastic than the later Silitech models. It's not quite as rigid, feeling more flexible, and logo, which is the old Dell logo by the way, is printed in a different manner compared to the old logo Silitech models, which also existed. If you look carefully, you can see that the Alps model used a printing method that's distinctly on the plastic, as if it were pad printed, while the Silitech model used lettering that appears to be sunk into the plastic, as if it were die subbed, apparently a case of die subbed ABS, as the case seems to be ABS on that one. I have no idea what plastic the Alps model is made out of, however it is known to yellow, so I think it's just a different formulation of ABS. It dissolves in acetone at least. 
There is a clear difference in sound between this model and the later Silitec models as well. The Alps one sounds much better. The Silitec 8101 has a very distinctive sound to it, instantly recognizable, which is not unpleasant, but not as good as this older model. Here's a comparison between the Alps 8101 and the Silitec M90. The very oldest ones used a 5-pin DIN AT connector and or ABS double-shot keycaps, but these are fairly rare and these Alps made 8101s are already not super common. This is the more widespread model, specifically the 8101-102 FCC type ISO layout version with a PS2 connector and PBT die sublimed keycaps. You can tell it was made by Alps rather than Silitec because of the FCC ID, which starts with GYI instead of GYU. The keycaps are in fact one of the main reasons this particular model is so sought after. For the very large majority they use these medium thick PBT keycaps, more or less the same ones that were used on the Apple standard and extended keyboards which Alps also made, but these instead are OEM profile and use a normal font, Helvetica in this case, and a normal letter location up in the top left. As you can see, the letters really aren't perfectly aligned, it looks like everything is too high up. This printing error, or I'm assuming it is, extends to the entirety of the keyboard and it makes them look rather ugly actually. What I think has happened is that they misaligned the transfer sheet in the printer. This is the medium that holds the ink that's eventually transferred into the plastic. These 8101 caps are the only kind of normal Alps mount PBT dicebs that you can regularly find out there. The only other ones are the Apple ones, which use that hideous oblique font and stupid letter placement, and the SGI ones, which are much better but still use an oblique font, which is not for everybody. There are other Alps die subs, of course, but they tend to be much harder to find. Between great build quality, nice keycaps, very nice switches, a modern win keyless layout, and an easy to adapt PS2 interface, this is a great keyboard to use. Considered the most desirable model in the entire Dell 8101 range, I'd say their reputation is well deserved, although the prices you see on eBay are pretty criminally insane, I'd say. Note that it does have two key rollover and a matrix that's not the most efficient I've ever seen. So in some games you may have some key combinations block, but it's not super terribad or anything. For the vast majority of gaming applications, two key rollover is fine, I found, and I had no issues of significance during testing. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.